Hello, welcome, welcome. Um, so last time we have this, uh, and it doesn't do much. I mean, we can add numbers, but um, well, computers can do a series of instructions one after each another, right? So. Um, it can add a lot of numbers together, right? So, well, how do we add that? Um, well, one thing that we can do is this. All right, so we have this. Uh, what does it do? It's called a multiplexer, but, uh, well, let's... Let's put an output on it, and uh, let's put some inputs. Okay, and we need one more input for the selector. So let's wire this all together. And you'll see um, the output is already four. Uh, if I do this, then it becomes eight. Um, so what it's doing is it's deciding between these two numbers. But um, what if we want more numbers than just two? Well, we could do that. Let's make this have two bits for the selector. All right. Okay, um, two in, oh, okay, yeah, right. I have to change this to two. Okay, all right. Now, okay, so two is on the output, uh, one. Now four is on the output. If we put two in here, now eight is on the output, and three and six is on the output. In other words, you can think of this as selecting one of the inputs based on the selector input at the bottom there. So depending on the value of the selector, it will root one of the inputs to its output. So this could be handy. Uh, we could have a bunch of inputs, um, a bunch of numbers to compute, right? Hmm. Okay, well, let's, let's figure out how we can build this here. We have one output number here, and we have two inputs. Well, one thing that we could do is just uh, copy and paste this a few times. What would we call this? Well, it selects which register, or not register, which um, instruction. Uh, and this you can kind of think of as a program. So maybe program counter. We could call it the PC. Um, OK, let's do that. All right, so. Uh, oh, and we got to make sure that we've set the number of bits in here. Okay, um, well, let's enter in a bit of a program, shall we?
Okay, so we have 154 on our output here. Let's uh, let's try uh, incrementing our program counter. So now we're on one, which is 242. That looks correct. Now we're on two, and it's 99 plus one, so we got 100. That looks correct. Um, and now we have uh, three, uh, which is 34 plus 26, and it says it's 60. Um, I trust it. So it would be nice to automatically increment the program counter so it'll go and cycle through all of our instructions. Um, and also what would be nice is if we had some uh, defaults on here so that we don't have to enter those things in every time. Okay, so now we have our program uh, entered in for us when we boot, so to speak. Um, that's useful. Uh, so program counter, well, if it's a counter, then maybe a counter would actually work. Um, yeah, let's, let's use a counter. So the counter has got some inputs here. Well, uh, I think we want it always enabled and we don't want to clear. So let's, let's set this to zero. Uh, and actually let's call this PC. Um, okay, so what do we connect to this input? Um, well, let's, let's use a push button and just connect it to that for now. Okay, so we have 154 out. We push it, we've got 242. We have 100 and we have 34 plus 26, which is 60. Hmm, okay, well, this seems pretty promising. Um, and if we hit it again, then it goes back to the beginning and we get 154. So yeah, we have a computer that's able to add more than one number or more than one pair of numbers together. And we have the beginning of a way of keeping track of um, where we are in the program. So that's cool. But when it outputs, it just outputs here and then everything is forgotten at that point. So wouldn't it be nice to be able to remember that? Well, we can do that. Let's see. Uh, well, so the basic form of memory is called a flip-flop. Uh, we have a bunch of different kinds of flip-flops. Um, probably the one that we'll end up using the most is a D flip-flop. Here it is. Uh, it takes a clock, just like the counter does, and it takes D, and it has an output, Q. Um, okay. So what does this do? Um, well, let's play with it a little bit here. Okay. Um, well, when we hit the clock, nothing happens, but let's Let's give it 12. So we gave it C, but there's nothing on the output. But if we click the button, then C ends up on the output. Okay, well, this is getting somewhere. This kind of seems like some sort of memory. Um, let's give it a different value. Let's, let's say five. 
and when we hit the button, then it remembers five. Okay, so, hmm. So um, I haven't really explained what a clock is yet, um, but essentially what a clock does is synchronizes um, all of the operations within the computer to a single signal. So you can think of a clock as like, um, you know how rowers have somebody at the head of the boat saying, row, 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 and that synchronizes the effort of everyone on the boat. Um, well, a clock is kind of that way. Um, but instead of synchronizing uh, rowers, it's synchronizing uh, all of the computation that happens within the computer so that it just doesn't become a jumbled mess on the output, if that makes sense. And it'll become more clear as the series goes on exactly what I mean by that. But um, let's share the clock. All right, so um, we've got 154 on the output to 42, 100, and 60. Um, it's not immediately obvious what's happening here, though. And also, it only remembers for a single clock cycle, and then the next clock cycle erases the value be nice if we had like um, a way to line up okay this is what the result is for each one of these we have these multiplexers let's try and use one to um, to set up a few of these as outputs Let's have one of these for each uh, pair of inputs. And we have a clock line for all of these. Well, what's the opposite of a multiplexer? Because we want to have a single input that goes to one of many outputs, right? Uh, well, that would be a demultiplexer. Okay. Um, well, let's put the program into here. Okay, does this do what we want? Nope, it sure doesn't. Although, we're getting close. Um, every time we click it, it does show us which computation we're doing. So that's useful. It would be nice if it remembered the computation after it was done though. So how might we do that? Well, we have this clock line, and right now we just have all of these on the same clock. Well, maybe we could use one of these demultiplexers to select which one gets the clock. That kind of makes sense. So, uh, well, let's try that. Okay, so we want to send the clock into here. There. Uh, does this work? Oh. Hmm. Can you guess what's happening?
we have our first glitch. What ends up happening is, if you think about it, uh, this clock pulse is changing this counter. So at the beginning of the clock pulse, both the program counter here changes as well as the pulse goes through to one of these registers, right? So the register, well, I'm calling these registers. Uh, these are D flip-flops, but also called registers. This register gets the clock pulse before the program counter increments, but then the program counter increments and changes this multiplexer before the clock pulse is done. So it ends up clocking into both of these registers instead of just the one that we were expecting. Let's go back to this state. We have, um, we have all of these being clocked and we have a selector that's doing, that's selecting something, right? Well, what should we select? Well, we want these to remember unless it's the next clock pulse. So well what we could do is instead of going directly into the register, we could go through this. And what we can do is if the register isn't selected, then it just keeps its current value. If it is selected, then it gets a new value. Okay, and then we can tie this to here, and we can tie this to here. So let's try that. Oh, 16 bits. Mm, that's because this needs to be 16. So we still have the same glitch with these ones, but you see this one is now remembering what it had. All right, that's starting to look like a bit of a mess, but uh, let's see if it works. It does. And as we go through the program, um, just recalculates the same, same numbers. So we'd have to change this, let's say 101, and this is 201. Um, and as we go through, it'll eventually refresh those and calculate the correct numbers. So what we have is we have program memory on the left and we have data memory on the right. And we built our own data memory. Um, so if you were ever wondering what is random access memory, well, this is essentially what it is. It's just a, a bunch of registers with uh, a way to remember what's in the register constantly. Not all the details are right, but it, it's close. So um, I hope this was uh, very interesting. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Have yourself a great day. Bye.